Hey guys, it's Faith Calendar, a Barbadian born and raised. And today I'm getting to know a little bit more about my history, meeting up with historian, Mr. Farmer. And we are at the Newton Burial Ground. Now it's history month, and I know this is gonna be pretty interesting. So stay tuned. Good morning, Mr. Farmer. Hi, good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Welcome to the enslaved burial ground at Newton. Before we begin, I just want to pour a libation to our ancestors. We always do that before we do any work at all Okay. Um, up at the burial space. Mm -hmm. So if you come with me. So once we've passed this sign, we're really um, inside of, of the burial ground. I, I'm not going to profess to be an expert, but we always have a libation before we do any work. Mm -hmm. Thank them for allowing us to come here safely mm -hmm. and to bless the work that we're about to do as we ensure that their sacrifices and memories maintained for our people. Welcome um, to Newton. Um, this is a, a sacred site. Mm -hmm. um, this is a site where we believe you have over 500 um, African and Barbadian born people who have been interred, wow. laid to rest by family. Mm -hmm. So you've got mothers and fathers and grandfathers and grandmothers and wow. sisters and brothers and aunts and nieces and cousins. <laughs> because in some instances here, the excavations have indicated family plots. So persons just weren't buried just like that, mm. um, but that they were buried with family members. Oh, okay. Um, and, and then you've got some other burials that indicate that the person might have been somewhat of a high status. Mm. Or a person who might have practiced a particular brand of religion and they were given a particular type of burial as well. Uh, so those are some of the people who were interred um, in this space. And it's even amazing how this has come to be. Uh, Newton is in fact unique. Um, yes, you do find enslaved people buried um, in Barbados, in one or two burials, or you might find burials where it's a mixture of enslaved and, and freed people mm -hmm. as well. So the unique thing about this site, it's the only known and excavated communal enslaved burial site in, in the hemisphere. Um, so it's just not unique to Barbados, but it's unique for the region. Right. Um, that might change, but for now, that is the importance of the site. Right, right. Um, so as we walk the site this morning, mm -hmm. we're going to get to learn a bit more about the people who um, were buried here, mm -hmm. what we found out from archaeological investigations, mm -hmm. but also what's important about this site beyond the science to us as a people. And I think that's critically important. Um, for us to discuss and the fact that we are in the midst of doing some interpretation at the site mm -hmm. so if you come back to the site on Emancipation Day mm -hmm. it will look totally different than it looks now mm -hmm. right so let's, let's just take a walk mm -hmm. um, so one of the reasons too when we come up here we tell people not to, to drive on what they think is grass mm -hmm. is that we're, we're actually walking on some of the burials oh. um, so some of the burials are mounded like this area here, mm -hmm. others um, are, are flat. Um, so, so for a long time, it was thought that majority of burials are, are mounded. Mm -hmm. um, but we have found instances, and we'll, we'll walk up to that area just below the ridge, where um, we found non-mounded burials. Um, so the entire space is, is the burial ground. Um, we can't tell you if they left any markers. We've not found any evidence um, of that. Right. Um, they, they might have been at some point in time, but that has been lost over time. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have uh, mounded burials um, like this. So how do you guys actually know persons were buried here? Um, that came through excavation. So um, the gentleman who did the work, um, the two researchers, uh, Professor Handler, Professor Lang, they were in Barbados in, I think, the late 70s, looking for enslaved villages and burial sites, and they, they couldn't find any. Mm -hmm. um, they happened to Newton where um, they saw an elderly gentleman, mm -hmm. and they asked him questions 
if he happened to have known if there was a burial ground. Mm -hmm. And he said to them, in fact he did, that his grandmother and great grandmother had passed down that memory to him, mm -hmm. that his ancestors were buried over in Newton Plantation mm -hmm. in this field. Okay. And he brought them here. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, we don't like to write. We tell stories. We keep our memories orally. Right. And this is the instance where that oral memory proved to be true. Mm -hmm. um, so he gave them the information. They, they came to this field and they began to excavate and began to find um, the skeletal remains of, of our ancestors. Okay. Um, and it's from those skeletal remains that we understand how people would have lived. In some cases, how people died. So there's a lot of lead content mm. um, that was found. So a lot of people were, were malnourished mm. because they're being overworked, not right. given good food. Right. Um, but the lead content for a while comes down to the, the rations of rum that people were given mm. um, because it would have been lead pipes. Um, so that lead got into the body. And if you have too much lead in your body, that causes problems. Mm. Um, you can. They've also noted that from some of the skeletal material, you can actually see how hard people were worked as well. Okay. Um, so that was also there. And then in the late 90s, early 2000s, we've had other researchers who've taken some of that material and begun to do DNA testing mm. to understand their places of origin. Right. Um, and to understand where they might have come from, mm. which, which almost has a direct correlation to us now. Mm -hmm. um, People talk about DNA testing, can we find out who we are? Where did we come from? Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes. I think the intriguing question that we might want to do in the next couple of years is to be able to locate the family members of right. the persons who were interred here. Right. Where are they? Right. Because um, maybe the elderly gentleman that we mentioned before, that memory died with him. But True. there's an entire family out there that has no idea that has no <laughs> idea that their ancestors are here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that becomes really, really important. So, how do we find that out, or, or how um, soon can you see something like that happening? That's going to take time and money, but mm -hmm. I, I would like to think that maybe in the next two to three years, we can have a project that seeks to marry the two, looking at what is ancient DNA, but bringing it into a project where we ask Barbadians. Um, to give DNA samples so that we can do that cross matching. Uh, maybe starting in this Christchurch area and maybe St. Philip, uh, the bit how Barbadians tend, tend to migrate over time, uh, finding out where the Tenantry village was for Newton, mm -hmm. seeing if there's anybody who still lives there, right. uh, where they know that the ancestors, uh, you know, the family plot. Oh yeah, we've always had this family plot for the last hundred years. Okay, mm -hmm. so you would have been a, a descendant of someone who's interred here, right, can, right. can we make that connection? Okay. Um, but the other interesting thing about Newton is that we do have documentation. Mm -hmm. We're now sifting through it to try to get a better idea of the names of people who were buried here. We do know some, we don't know all. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, the enslaved village was across there. It'd be nice at some point to do some type of investigation to understand how large that was. And even over here, uh, because we, we're kind of put a moratorium on excavation and uh, we're going to be starting a project within the next week where we'll use ground penetrating radar uh, to identify um, additional burials and, and probably begin to understand what is the actual size of this burial space. Okay. Uh, so those are some of the questions that we can still ask yeah, cool. and get that information. Um, we're going to head up to the ridge so we can make the connection. You can see how the landscape has been laid out. In fact, before we get it to the ridge line, I just want to point out this area over here. As happens seasonally, you get cane fires. Mm -hmm. And one year, um, there was a cane fire that burnt this entire burial space. And in this area here, we saw an outline of what we would traditionally think of as a burial plot. You know, it had a perimeter, it had a space as though there was a gate leading in. And we were like, wow, imagine this was literally hidden right. under the grass. Uh, but because of that fire, the outline uh, was revealed to us. Wow. Um, so we already knew that people buried in family plots. Mm -hmm. What we didn't quite know was ever family plots were ever demarcated in some way. And we had the evidence here that that did occur. 
Okay, so you guys took pictures and... Took pictures and measured it out and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, it just adds another layer of, of humanity. Because mm -hmm. again, when we say enslaved or slaves, the people almost lose a sense of identity. Mm -hmm. um, what sites like this do is it begins to um, allow us to recapture what that humanity was mm -hmm. um, through a simple act of burial. Right. If someone's going to bury you, it means that they love you. It's true. Yeah. True. So let me ask a bad question. Did you like history at school? <laughs> um, 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 I didn't because they had to do it. Oh, no. <laughs> well, what we do with sites like this is seek to bring them alive. Mm -hmm. So we have a better understanding of what our history is. Ah, so this is, this is great. So we're up on the ridge line. Um, for those Barbadians who haven't been here, to my south is the ABC Highway coming off of Newton Roundabout. Um, over to my left and east, in the area here where you see the um, Marvin Tong trees, it's where you believe the enslaved village would have been. You call them the what? Mother, um, woman's tongue. So these okay. trees here? Okay. Right, these are woman's tongue. Okay. So in that area is where the enslaved village would have been. Mm -hmm. This is the burial space, not too far away. Mm -hmm. the, the factory, we believe, is where that chimney is. Mm -hmm. And the plantation house, um, that royal palm directly ahead is where the Newton um, estate house was located. Okay. So we get a sense of how the plantation is laid out. Mm -hmm. And of course, down the road is oyster things. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where the sugar and rum would have been shipped from. No need to go to Bridgetown because you've got your own port. Right. Um, we can even imagine that perhaps in some instances, some of the slave ships actually would have come to Oystins and brought people up as opposed to bridge tongue and then people being walked from tongue here. Right. Both scenarios um, could have played out. Mm -hmm. And this is the plantation that they worked. This is the place that they had no idea where they were coming to. Mm -hmm. um, plantation was established in 1660. Mm -hmm. So from 1660 to the end of slavery, 1838, um, families would have come here, worked, died, had their own families here, mm -hmm. who would have done the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, and at every step, resisting. At every step, wanting freedom. Right. Um, and here we are. Mm -hmm. um, descendants of people like them not from this plantation, or maybe, who knows, maybe we might be. Might be. <laughs> <laughs> um, coming back to this space as, as freed people, mm -hmm. coming back to this space where we now control our destiny, where we can uh, pay homage to them, have a space to, to reconcile what is a traumatic past. Right. And, and hopefully bring some healing to us, but also understanding mm -hmm. that this doesn't happen again. I right. think that's also important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Understood. So how how do you think they brought uh, the dead here from from their village? Uh, how did they transport them, so to speak, they, to the burial ground? So they would have made their way from their enslaved village, um, walked over with with their with their dead. Mm -hmm. um, we've looked down below where we've seen some mounded. But the excavations also show that they, there were some burials along this ridge line as well. Mm -hmm. So when we say the entire space, we talk about the entire space being used. Mm -hmm. um, and you would have had song, you would have had dance um, to commemorate the life of that person. That person would have been interred with, with, with grave goods. Um, it might have been um, something that was personal to them or personal to a family member um, that was buried. Right. And the other interesting thing uh, about Newton at, at the time in the 70s when the excavation uh, was done, it, it was this belief that enslaved people had nothing. Mm. And the material culture found with the enslaved people here showed that that wasn't true. Right. People had 
uh, bangles made of silver, they had earrings, they had pendants. Right. Um, so they were able in what was uh, a system meant to oppress them, meant to deny them any human agency. They were able at, at specific times to exert that human agency. Right. Um, and in fact, when you go to the documentary records for Newton, um, plantation managers in the 18th century writing that, you know, a particular slave walked off the plantation um, because they recognized that they had to let them walk off and they would say they were mi went missing for a few days, probably went to visit um, Kimfo at neighboring plantations or ventured into Bridgetown or wherever and they came back bearing gifts. Um, so again, it, it points to we don't fully, we're only beginning now to have a better understanding right. of, of enslavement a better understanding of the agency of enslaved people. Right, uh, so they, they were allowed to like leave this area and as you say, go to Bridgetown and yes. stuff like that? I can't even say allowed, they walked off. They, okay. they, didn't, they didn't ask permission, they just went. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, and there's a case, a very famous case, um, I'll take you to, there's a book, a small pamphlet called Old Doll, uh, which is part of the museums writing history series that talks about Old Doll, okay. uh, who was a matriarch here at a particular time, mm -hmm. who got so fed up with the treatment of the plantation manager that she, she made her way to England mm -hmm. and went to the owner of the plantation and complained wow. that the manager was treating her and her family badly mm -hmm. and that that person needed to be dismissed. Wow. And she was enslaved. And was action taken on that? Or? Um, I, I think some action was taken. What eventually happened is that she was able to manumit her family. Um, okay. I think a daughter and a, and a, and a son. Mm. How did she get to England? Uh, literally, she ran away. But she clearly had enough money that she could <laughs> find passage to right, England. Right. I think initially, she went to St. Vincent and then, and then to England. Okay. Yeah. No, you're stretching my memory. You have to <laughs> remember all these things. Um, but yeah, so we can walk the site across to this ridge line. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Cool. So I think the thing for us is to recognize that in, in a month like Heritage Month, um, it's especially important to pay attention to sites like these, to recognize that they tell our history. Mm -hmm. and, and for persons to come and, and visit the site. Um, and as I said, we're in the midst of doing some interpretation. Uh, we have interpretation up here, mm -hmm. along the ridge line, uh, down below, and have seating for people. Okay. Um, because Barbadians, some Barbadians do come up on Emancipation Day and other days mm -hmm. um, to pay their respects. Uh, and what they come to is, for them, an open field. Um, mm. What we want them to come to is an interpreted space where they can read information ah, okay. um, ab about their ancestors right. and, and have a space, a safe space in which to sit and <laughs> come to terms with, with that history as well. Right. Um, we think that's, that's very, very important. You mentioned earlier um, about you know, different rituals, African rituals and stuff that they would have performed yep. or uh, been a part of their lifestyle, I guess. Yep. Um, are you familiar with any of them or? N not, not intimately familiar because mm -hmm. unfortunately, a lot of what they did was never written down. Okay. Um, but if you think about your singer mm -hmm. or, or, or Calypso, mm -hmm. the way in which you write songs, um, they would have brought some of that with them okay. and, and with interactions here developed it in a particular way. Right. So, so in fact, there's a Barbados slave song uh, which is known to be the oldest slave song of its kind which was rediscovered in an archive maybe five or six years ago. Okay. And now, it's now part of what is called the Memory of the World inscription. Mm -hmm. And we've had one or two local performers perform the song and it is, it is haunting. Mm -hmm. Because the European who heard it actually, because um, he was a musician, mm -hmm. noted what the lyrics and the melody um, okay. was and what the score and he wrote it up. Okay. So you can, from his notes, actually perform the song mm -hmm. the way that he heard it. 
Okay. Um, but but it's very haunting. The, 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 the words and the lyrics is very oh, haunting. Do you know it? You can sing. You can oh, sing. I can't sing. <laughs> I am torn down. My, uh, my, my singing might awaken the dead. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> we'll I, gotta, I'll have to do my, my yeah, research but, on but that if, one. If you, if, you go, if you go to YouTube and you pull up Barbados Slave Song, it, it will okay. pop up. Okay. Um, remember 1688 Orchestra had um, performed it at the museum mm. on at least two occasions. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah. So, and if you think about, okay, that's music. Mm -hmm. um, dance. Dance. Some people believe that the walk-up is part of a, a larger dance movement called the Joe and Johnny, which is now being forgotten. Okay. And then, of course, there's our food. Mm -hmm. So, how we, although many of us don't anymore, cook. Cook. <laughs> I still cook. All you do is cook. <laughs> um, cuckoo and flying fish, cuckoo mm -hmm. and salt fish. The, the mere fact that we, we use the word cuckoo, which is a derivative of fufu, mm. which is to mash. Okay. So, anything that is mashed is a cuckoo. Mm. So breadfruit cuckoo, meal cuckoo, right. cassava cuckoo. Mm. Never heard of that one. Really? Cassava cuckoo? Cassava cuckoo. Never. Huh? Sweet potato cuckoo. Now, now my grandmother used to, no, did she? No, my grandmother's mother uh -huh. used to do cassava and bonavis cuckoo. Mm. So if there's anybody out there who <laughs> has a grandparent or great grandparent, and they remember that, I Give us a ask call. My granny about that. Yes. Sweet potato, cassava, and bonavis. Cassava and bonavis. Okay. Cuckoo. I'll try to remember that. Because cuckoo just means mash. Right. So you mash anything, that's a cuckoo. Okay. It's like for Bajans, anything hot is tea. <laughs> right. Cocoa tea, tea tea. Right. You know, coffee tea. Er, coffee tea. <laughs> everything is a tea. Right. Um, but it, it is it is these people who brought their their culinary skills with mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. They weren't able to reproduce um, what they would have had at home, mm -hmm. but they made adaptations. Right. And, and that, some of that is what we, what we eat today. Mm -hmm. So uh, how, did, how did they get the, the uh, supplies and, and stuff? stuff. To well, it depends. Um, some supplies were brought mm -hmm. um, on board ship, but over time, if you look at the plantation accounts, you can see that they're buying salted cod from Canada. Mm -hmm. They're they're importing rice from the Carolinas, mm -hmm. which were which was settled from Barbados. Okay. Um, they're bringing in cornmeal, mm -hmm. and and millet, mm -hmm. which we call Guinea corn. Mm -hmm. Guinea corn is actually millet, which is sorghum, which we only use in jug jug nowadays. Mm -hmm. For those who still eat jug jug, many people don't. Right. Um, but in a way, jug jug is a complete meal, protein and carbohydrates together. Right. Uh, we only now have it once a year at Christmas. Um, so some of the enslavers understood what were some of the culinary practices and, and sought to give foods that mimic that. Okay. And our ancestors adapted and created new foods. Um, out of that, some of which have been passed down to us. Right. Um, even even we believe the the ability to um, manufacture alcohol mm -hmm. because they came from regions where palm wine uh, would have been distilled, mm -hmm. and we believe that they would utilize some of that skill in in turning molasses into rum. Okay. Um, so so this is there's this entire toolkit of of survival and food ways and and speech that they brought with them, some of which have been passed down. Like, just now you said something that was truly Bajan. What was that? I still cook. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm a, I'm a Bajan to the bone. To the bone. <laughs> there you go. And it, the words like wuna and una and yeah, juk. Yeah. And, and even how we say certain things, the, yeah. the syntax and the inflection mm -hmm. is, is, is West African. Mm. Um, if you want to if you want to hear how we might have sounded in the 18th or 19th century, I would say listen to Gullah Geechee from South Carolina. Okay. Uh, when you hear them speak, you're like, oh, that's Beijing. Mm. I mean, yes, a slight American accent, mm. but 
the the tones and some of the words right um you're like oh yeah i can understand what that is okay and this is this is what they're brought uh, the way we dress mm. um particular colors that we might like mm -hmm. um even even distilled down to the churches that we decide to go to right um it's all coming out of that that rich culture that even though there was an active decision to stamp it out, people kept. They, they masked it in certain ways mm -hmm. and kept it, and it's been handed down to us. And it's for us now to recognize what that is and to keep it alive. Right. Yeah, and it all starts in a space like this. Intrigued by the information shared here today uh, by Mr. Farmer, uh, so much I was unaware of, so much to learn and you know I know a lot of you guys are probably you know awed at some of the stuff that was said here today but we got to ask some questions get to know our history get to know where our people came from um, just so much knowledge man so stay tuned <laughs>